Good afternoon. This is Kathleen Drew, Chair of the Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council, calling our April 19th meeting to order. Ms. Grantham, will you call the roll? Yes. Yes. Department of Department Commerce. Hey, Kelly. Kelly. Department of Department Ecology. Of Department of Fish and Wildlife. Sorry for ecology. This is Eli Lovett. Thank you. Department of Fish and Wildlife. Mike Livingston is present. Department of Natural Resources. Lenny Young, present. Utilities and Transformation Transportation Commission. Local Government uh, and Options. Stacey present, sorry. Thank you. Local government and optional state agencies for the Horse Heaven Project, Department of Agriculture. Derek Sanderson present. Benton County. Ed Burroughs present. For the Badger Mountain Project, Douglas County. Jordan Julio present. Administrative, or apologies, the Assistant Attorney General. Uh, this is John Thompson present. Administrative Law Judges, Adam Torum. This is Judge Torum, I'm on the line. Laura Bradley. This is Judge Bradley, I'm here with you. For FSEC Council Staff, Sonia Bumpus. Sonia Bumpus, present. Amy Hofkemeyer. Amy Hofkemeyer, present. Amy Moon. Amy Moon, present. Joe Wood. Joe Wood present. Patty Betts. Stu Henderson. Here. Joan Owens. For the operational Joan updates. Owens is excused. Thank you. For the operational updates, Kittitas Valley Wind Project. Eric Melbard is present. Wild Horse Wind Power Project. Jennifer Galbraith present. Grace Harbor Energy Center. Chris Sharon's present. Shahalis Generation Facility. Snicker is present. Columbia Generating Station. This is Dennis Nakinagic present. Columbia Solar. Uh, Owen Hurd present. Council for the Environment, Bill Sherman. Present. And Megan Salome. Present. Chair, there is a quorum for the regular council and for the Horse Heaven and Badger Mountain councils. Thank you. Thank this you. is Bill Sherman as Council for the Environment. Let me also uh, emphasize that Sarah Reineveld, who's Council for the Environment on the Horse Heaven Wind Farm, is also on the line. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our proposed agenda, council members, you see the agenda before you is, I believe, I think I froze there for a minute. Um, the agenda is before you. Is there a motion to approve, adopt the proposed agenda? Lenny Young, so moved. Second, Kelly. I'll second that. I think that was Mike Livingston. Um, thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is adopted. Moving on to the meeting minutes. We have two sets of minutes this month. First is the March 15th monthly meeting minutes, which are in your packets. And uh, on the screen, the appearing before you. Is there a motion to approve the March 15th monthly meeting minutes? This is Stacy Brewster. I'll move that we approve the March 15th monthly council meeting minutes. Thank you. Second? Hey, Kelly, second. Are there any edits or changes?
This is Eli. I think on the March 15th one on page nine, instead of siding with a T, it's spelled, it's spelled siding, siding with a D. But I might be mixing it up with the other set of notes we're approving. Fair enough. I don't see it on this one. Yeah, maybe it's the other set of notes, sorry. Okay. Um, let me quickly, I'll just skip forward and see there. On my own screen here. So let's uh, see that we will correct the word citing from citing with a D to citing with a T if we find it in these in this document. Um, all those in favor of uh, that uh, the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Moving on to the meeting minutes for um, the Goose Prairie site certification uh, um, agreement amendment hearing. Uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve the SCA transfer public comment, comment hearing Meeting minutes. This is Eli, motion to approve. Thank you. Second. This is Stacy Brewster. I'll second. Okay. And again, if we find that a spelling error of uh, citing to change it from a D to a T. Oh, on page 20. Okay. I'm now seeing that there's on page 21, we will make those corrections. With that amendment, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting minutes are approved with the correction of that spelling error. Okay, moving on now to our project and facility updates. First, Kittitas Valley Wind Project, Mr. Bill Bardis. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, FSEC Council and staff. Uh, for the record, Eric Mel Bardis, EDP Renewables for the Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project. Uh, we had nothing non routine to report during the period. Thank you. For the Wild Horse Wind Power Project, Ms. Galbraith. Yes, thank you, Chair Drew, FSEC Council members and staff. This is Jennifer Galbraith with Puget Sound Energy for the Wild Horse Wind Facility. I have no non-routine updates for the month of March. Thank you. Moving on to the Chehalis Generation Facility, Mr. Schnitker. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, FSEC Council members and staff. For the record, this is Steph Tom Schnicker, Operations Manager reporting from the Shadows Generation Facility. For the reporting period of March 2022, the Shahalis Generation Facility conducted its annual RADA test, its relative, relative accuracy test audit on a continuous, excuse me, on the continuous emissions monitoring system. Uh, the RADA, the preliminary results were within compliance requirements. We'll re uh, report to the FSEC staff. During the RADA, 
Sean Chisholm with AppSec visited the plant site. And also Clint Lamoureau with SWICA visited the plant site as well. They requested to review several documents which were provided to them, and there were no corrective actions required from any of the documents provided. That's all I have to report for the Shares Generation facility. Thank you. Grays Harbor Energy. Mr. Sharon. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council members and staff. Uh, this is Chris Sharon, the plant manager at Grays Harbor Energy Center. For the month of March, the only non routine item we have to report is that uh, we submitted our stack emissions retesting results of our sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide um, tests. The the results, though much improved, were again problematic and unrealistic in the Grays Harbor Energy Center. We did have a meeting with aesthetic staff. We proposed um, we proposed corrective action and uh, submitted those those action proposed actions to the FSEC staff. Thank you. Are there any questions from council members? This is Stacy Brewster. I'm wondering if you could give us a quick idea of what you'll be doing next for corrective action. It's the high level is, is we're going to use uh, CTM 013 instead of met, uh, EPA's method 8. And uh, uh, CTM, I think it's just, if I remember right, it's conditional test method 013. It's the same method we used pre in the prior stack testing that we did here at Grays Harbor successfully, and it's it's supposed to be less susceptible to moisture and particulate in the uh, ex exhaust gas. Thank you, Ms. Hofkemeyer. Thank you, Chair Drew. Uh, for the record, this is Amy Hofkemeyer with FSEC staff. I just wanted to um, let the council know that FSEC staff and um, SWICA and Ecology um, are all discussing the, the facility's proposal to make sure that um, that will address the issue and determine whether or not any other follow-up action is needed. And we're still coordinating with each other and with the facility on this. Thank you. So um, appreciate that. Any other questions or comments from council members? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to Columbia Generating Station and Washington Nuclear Project 1 and 4. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, FSEC Council and staff. This is Dennis Mekinagic reporting for Energy Northwest. For the month of March, I have no updates. Okay, thank you. Let's see, next on our agenda is Columbia Solar, Mr. Hurd. Great. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council members, and FSEC staff. This is Owen Hurd from Tuso Energy reporting on the Columbia Solar projects. Um, the update on Penstemon is that Puget Sound Energy was out there last week resolving final communications issues on the interconnection. Um, I believe that work is now complete. I'll have confirmation of that in the next day or two, but um, um, if so, then Penstemon is um, is complete. Um, Camus is uh, mechanically complete. We're um, expecting mechanical or substantial completion in early May. Um, I think the notes that I'd submitted said yeah, April 22nd, but I think it's looking more like May 10th. Um, but that all seems on track. Um, Urtica, we're continuing to have um, a, deal with issues around power remediation. Um, we'll be installing some concrete collars around some of the twisted piles. Um, I think we're looking at um, late June or early July um, um, uh, for, for completion of that project. Um, and then beyond that, um, the, the site restoration financial assurance um, 
as you may recall, that was going to be replaced by Greenbacker, um, and that was a condition for the indirect train uh, change of uh, control of that permit. Um, I believe that that security has now been posted, um, and um, and so I, I think we'll be revisiting that in a future council meeting to kind of complete the um, the the the, tr the indirect transfer of control. So not, nothing else to report. Okay, thank you. Any questions from council members? Okay, hearing none, moving on to the next item on our agenda, which is the Desert Claim Wind Power Project. Ms. Moon. Good afternoon, Council Chair Drew and members of the council. For the record, this is Amy Moon providing the Desert Claim update. FSEC staff continue to coordinate with Desert Claim. However, currently there are no project updates. Thank you. And while I have you, moving on to Horse Heaven Wind Farm. SEPA update, Ms. Moon. Yes, uh, again, um, good afternoon, Council Chair Drew and Council members. This is Amy Moon once again with the update for the Horse Heaven Wind Project. In March, FSEC staff continued to work on the preparation of the draft environmental impact statement, otherwise known as the DEIS. This includes the review of our contractor Golders work drafting the DEIS as well as coordinating the draft environmental Im impact statement chapter reviews with Washington state agencies. FSEC staff continue to work on wildlife and habitat, including impact analysis and opportunities for avoidance and minimization of impacts. The work continues to support the applicant in refining an updated mitigation plan. The preparation of the draft environmental impact statement has involved several data requests, supplemental report review, and significant work on the format for presenting impact analysis. As a result, F6 staff would like to provide a draft EIS schedule update. Uh, at this time, we anticipate the draft EIS will be issued for public comment no earlier than June of 2022, rather than May, which is what we had reported early this year. FSEC staff continue to anticipate a minimum 30-day public comment period. The working schedule was developed with several assumptions and updates to the schedule are not unusual as the draft EIS process evolves. In addition to working on the draft EIS in close collaboration with our contractor, FSEC is working with the Washington Attorney General's Office planning the adjudication process, which is part of the site certification application review process. Does the council have any questions? Are there any questions for Ms. Moon? Thank you. Moving on to our adjudication update, Ms. Hofkemeyer. Thank you, Chair Drew. Good afternoon, uh, Chair and Council. For the record, this is Amy Hofkemeyer. I have a brief update for you today on the Horse Heaven adjudication process. Staff have been coordinating with Judge Torum to begin planning the logistics of the adjudication and are still working to finalize details as we approach the initial stages of the process. This information includes timing of noticing, pre-hearing conferences, and public participation and FSEC will bring that information to the council and the public as we finalize these details. Um, at this time, FSEC staff would like to request that the council direct staff to coordinate with Judge Torum to prepare a land use consistency order to then be brought to the council for deliberation and potentially for council action at the May council meeting. This order would include the information brought forward at the land use hearing at which Judge Torum presided on March 30th, 2021, and staff and Judge Torum's recommendation on consistency. Are there any questions? Are there questions from council members? If not, is there a, a motion to direct staff to bring to the May council meeting a draft land use consistency order? for our consideration. This is Stacy Brewster. I'll move that the council 
direct staff to prepare a land use consistency order to bring to the council meeting in May for our consideration. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Eli Levitt, I'll second. Thank you. Is there discussion? We will certainly work to have that draft uh, for you to review in a, in a timely manner before the um, May meeting so that uh, you will have time to review that before our discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to Goose Prairie Solar Project Update, Mr. Wood. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council members and staff. This is Joe Wood, FSEC Site Specialist, providing a quick update on status of the Goose Prairie Solar Project. The only update I have on this project today is that FSEC staff is coordinating with the applicant on pre-construction plans and activities. I'll be updating the council and staff regarding these plans and activities and any other significant developments as we progress. And that's all I have for today, thanks. Thank you. And then we also have uh, action to potentially take here on the site certification agreement transfer. We had that hearing and reviewed those minutes on, um, I think it was Mar well, we reviewed them earlier today, but the meeting was on March 15th. Uh, Ms. Bumpus, do you have an update for us? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Drew. Good afternoon, Chair Drew and council members. For the record, this is Sonia Bumpus. Um, as you were saying, uh, Chair Drew, um, so uh, a, a public uh, comment uh, hearing was held on the Goose Prairie uh, request to transfer the SCA um, on May 15th, or excuse me, March 15th. Um, and then based off direction from the council from the March council meeting, the staff have prepared a draft order that would uh, allow the transfer of the site certification agreement from one energy renewable to uh, Goose Prairie Solar LLC. Uh, a draft of this order was sent to the council on April 5th. Uh, some additional comments were received by FSEC on the draft order and those were sent to the council, I believe by email yesterday. Um, staff uh, have reviewed the uh, the uh, changes that were proposed by the certificate holder, and um, we did not have any uh, concerns with those. And uh, with that, we uh, are uh, recommending that the council approve the order, which would allow the transfer of the SCA from One Renewable Energy to Goose Prairie Solar LLC. So the order that we received yesterday um, has these track changes in them um, and uh, is also in your packets, council members, and there are just a couple of minor uh, changes from what I can see. Is there a motion to approve the order on the Goose Prairie Solar Project on the transfer of site certification from One Energy Renewable to Brookfield. Lenny Young, so moved. Thank you, is there a second? Hey, Kelly, second. Is there discussion? I think this is fairly straightforward. We certainly had a lot of information about the resources of the uh, Brookfield that will be the new owner and uh, certainly significant experience in um, constructing and operating solar facilities of this scale. So I don't think there are, we did not have testimony and had a good opportunity to have questions answered during the public hearing. So. 
All those in favor of approving this transfer, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The order is adopted. Thank you, and we will get you a finalized um, copy, certainly um, with all these corrections, these couple of corrections included. And then the next step, as I understand it, is we will also um, send you a link to the amended site certification agreement. We're not asking you, the council as a whole, to review that since really what we're doing is a name change in ownership. So. Um, it's fairly um, straightforward in terms of uh, of finalizing that amendment. So, but we will send it to you when the work is completed. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Ms. Bumpus? No, that that actually was all I was going to add was that we would be updating this and assigning an order number and distributing to the council and posting to the website. Thank you. Moving on to the Badger Mountain project update, Ms. Hofgemeier. Thank you, Chair Drew. Uh, again, this is Amy Hofgemeier for the record. Uh, FSEC staff have completed the EIS scoping comment period for the Badger Mountain project and are now working on reviewing those comments. We received 18 comments from the public, um, including comments from uh, Washington Department of Transportation, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Council for the Environment. And uh, once we have completed our review of those project, or I'm sorry, of those comments, we will um, make a determination on what the scope of the environmental impact statement for the Badger Mountain project continue, will uh, be. And in the meantime, we continue to work with the applicant on some continued um, studies associated with um, the the proposal to make sure that we have all the identified all the inner uh, apologies all the information that the FSEC staff will need uh, to incorporate into the environmental impact statement are there any questions so at this point we have closed the comment period the staff is reviewing with our consultant on on what studies we will determine that we need to go forward on in the draft EIS. We are working on with the applicant on some studies that were previously identified by FSEC staff and our okay. contracted agencies. Um, what we anticipate identifying in the review of the scoping comments are what resources should be covered in depth in the environmental impact statement. OK, OK, so the studies were already ones that we needed for additional information. And in addition to that, we have um, then what what will the, the EIS will include? Correct. OK, thank you. Any other questions from council members? OK. Moving on to uh, the next item, which is Whistling Ridge Energy Project. Mr. Wood. Hello and good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council members and staff. Uh, for, the, for the record again, this is Joe Wood, FSEC Site Specialist, providing a brief update on status of the Whistling Ridge Wind Energy Project. So due to the amount of time that's passed since this project has seen any action, so to speak, I've been asked to give a bit of background for council and staff members who may be unfamiliar with the project. Uh, in March of 2009, Whistling Ridge Energy LLC submitted an application for site certification to construct and operate the proposed wind energy project, 
which at the time consisted of up to 51.2 to 2.5 megawatt wind turbines with a maximum generating capacity of 75 megawatts. The proposed project uh, was located on Saddleback Mountain in eastern Skamania County. A recommendation in part was submitted to the governor <clears throat> in October of 2011 and a site certification agreement was subsequently signed by the governor in March of 2012. So <clears throat> today's update is that at this time, FSEC staff is coordinating with the applicant to put an SEA amendment package in place. Once this package is in place, we will bring the request to the council and the staff for consideration. Uh, that is the update that I have at this time. Thank you. Are there any questions from council members? Joe, this is Lenny Young. What's the actual physical status or a process status of the project? Uh, physically, by physically, you mean any sort of movement on construction or anything like that? Yeah, has there been any ground disturbance or construction efforts, uh, or is this thing just been pended for a long time in pre-construction pre consideration? Um, I would defer maybe to Amy Hoffkemeyer on this as I'm really relatively new to it, but I don't believe that any any anything has uh, physically happened uh, at that site. But I, I like I said, I, I would defer to Amy and uh, could get get back to you with a verified answer. OK, and I can uh, jump in there. Yeah, let's um, uh, Ms. Hoffkemeyer, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the the Whistling Ridge project um, had several years of follow up um, appeals and other activity, and so they have not yet begun um, submitting pre construction plans or things like that to FSEC, and so they are still um, considered an approved facility, but have not started. Uh, the pre-construction plan process or process of approval of those plans. So are, are there any administrative or legal proceedings still underway or has it just sort of been mothballed for the last 11 years? The project has been, um, at least in terms of council activity, FSEC and council activity, um, I would say relatively dormant for several years. Um, I I would have to go back and look at our timeline to find out when the last legal activity uh, that involved FSEC decisions or FSEC materials were involved. Um, but they did, I want to say, in 2018, provide a five-year update. Um, right. And there's That's been correct. very little activity since then. Yes, thank you. And there were, in addition to appeals to the FSEC action, appeals to um, the the transmission activity, um, which I believe was a federal appeal as well. Um, so there are more details to the appeals process, but largely that um, is is what has happened. But then there has not been any um, further activity. Is that correct, uh, Ms. Bumpus? Ms. Hofkemeyer. That, that's that's our understanding. Yes, this is Sonia Bumpus, uh, that they went through several years of various appeals. And um, that was uh, our understanding is that's primarily the reason why the project didn't move forward over all these years. Uh, but now um, our understanding is that um, the certificate holder um, is looking at options and uh, looking at the fate of the project and we're working with their legal counsel to um, uh, put together um, what we think is going to be an SCA amendment request that will include a couple of different um, types of requests on this SCA. The, the whole thing seems a little murky to me. Could, could I request that staff provides a, a little bit more detailed uh, account of the history of the project and the status uh, at the May meeting, our FSEC May meeting, if that's possible. Absolutely, and um, we um, also would anticipate uh, that 
at the um, meeting where we bring the SCA amendment request once we do have it in hand uh, to the council. Um, similar to to other SCA amendments, though there, there will be a presentation by uh, the uh, applicant and um, they'll be available to answer questions as well. So I just wanted to mention, uh, and it's possible that in the May council meeting, we will have something in hand by then. So um, just uh, also look forward to that because uh, that'll be an opportunity for the council to ask questions. It'd be, it'd be great to get a staff report in addition to uh, whatever type of presentation the applicant might be uh, preparing for the, mm -hmm. uh, for the amendment request. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yes. Thank Madam, you. Madam Chair, this is Kate Kelly, and I know it's not necessary, but I, I second um, council members Young's request. I I mean, I recall having another project where it, construction did not occur and it expired kind of of its own um, by the terms of the SCA, I thought. Um, so I am just curious what's different here, and I'm right. sure there's an explanation, but. Um. Yes, yes, and we will have that um, information, which I know our um, AAG, John Thompson, will also be able to provide us with additional information um, as we go forward. We wanted to bring it up, even though we don't have, we know, and there's been discussions between staff and the certificate holder, so we know it's coming to an amendment, so we wanted to start the conversation with the council, even though we don't have that specific amendment in hand. So that's why we don't have um, all the details about what they're requesting at this point in time. But we do wanna start the conversation with council and we will have more information. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the next item on our agenda, which is High Top and Austria Solar Project. Ms. Hofgemeier. Thank you, Chair Drew. Uh, FSEC staff would like to bring forward to the Council the new application that FSEC has received on April 7th uh, of 2022, FSEC received an application from Cypress Creek Renewables for two proposed 80 megawatt solar facilities named the High Top Project and the Austria Project. And the applicant is here with a brief presentation to introduce their project to the council. Hello, this is Erin Berquist. I'm with TRC. Um, I'm the consultant working with Cypress Creek Renewables. And thank you. I was just going to ask about the presentation. Um, if you could go to the next slide, as Amy said, it's Austria Solar and High Top Solar. The two projects are located in Yakima County on that far eastern side, uh, north of State Route 24, south of the Yakima Training Center. They are both sites are owned by a single landowner um, who has submitted in addition to uh, the application, a letter of support for the projects. Um, as Amy noted, each project is 80 megawatts. They are separate as each will have a separate interconnection. High Top, which is the project on the um, west. And if you go to the actually two more slides down, um, we have a zoomed in. Uh, this is actually one more is High Top. I tend to think left to right on them. Um, this is High Top. It is uh, going to connect to Pacific Core Union Gap Midway. 230 kilovolt line, which runs on the kind of center of the project area. Um, you can kind of see that line crossing it there. And then um, most of the site is been farmed. You can kind of see it in the aerial. It is quite weedy. Um, you can see in those pictures there, a lot of mustards, kochia, um, Russian thistle. And if you go back one, this is the Austria project. And this one is located just to the um, east of High Top. And this one will connect to Bonneville Power Administration, Moxie to Midway, 115 kilovolt T line, which runs more on the southern side of this one here. And it's right below that interconnecting 
line that crosses between the boxes. Um, the projects will not take up all the areas shown on each of these uh, maps. This is the project site control parcel, which is the area has been leased, but each project will take up a smaller space within there. Um, and the design and layout of those boundaries did take into consideration the results of cultural and rare plant surveys that were conducted and the resources that were identified with those for avoiding impacts to both of those. Um, the application for site certification was submitted April 7th to FSEC, and we also submitted 10 hard copies and 10 USBs. Um, when we started the project in January of 2021, we coordinated with Yakima County, FSEC, WDSW, and other state agencies to identify what surveys were required. And those are the surveys conducted last summer. We have one more round of rare plant surveys, which will hopefully occur next week. I tried last week and it was snowing out there, but um, we also have some additional cultural surveys to finish up. And if you go back one more slide, uh, that's our note on CCR and Ty Wallace is on, and I'm gonna let him introduce CCR um, and kind of what their, what their company is. Ty, I'll turn it over to you. Aaron, thank you. Um, Madam Chair Drew, uh, FSEC Council members and staff, uh, thank you for your time today. My name is Ty Wallace. I'm the Director of Development for Cypress Creek um, for our transmission scale projects and markets in the Western United States. Um, on my team for this project or these projects, uh, we've got Jess Mosley. Uh, she's an Associate Project Developer. Um, we have Julie Alpert, who's our uh, Environmental Manager uh, for the Western Region, and then Saya Stratton, who's our Environmental Director among a number of other um, you know, teams and professionals and verticals that we have supporting uh, the development of this project, these projects. Um, Cyprus, you know, our, our mission is to power a sustainable future, one project at a time. Um, so we, we take a very intense uh, focus on micro siting, um, oftentimes you know, putting under lease option more land than we'll ultimately build so that we have the ability to uh, site around um, you know, constraints and, and uh, features um, as they're discovered during the, the permitting process. Um, Cyprus as an organization um, is a uh, near fully vertically integrated uh, independent power producer. Um, we do everything uh, in-house um, or in partnership with consultants with the exception of engineering, uh, procurement and construction. Um, we do uh, construction management, um, but we typically outsource our construction to the best local construction firms um, for our projects. Um, but we, uh, under the development division, uh, develop and finance um, our projects. Um, we also do fleet ownership and asset management uh, for internal um, projects as well as first part or sorry third party projects. Uh, we have 1.6 gigawatts of uh, solar projects, over 200 projects across the country in 14 states um, that we own and operate um, and also do the O&M for. Um, and we have an additional uh, nearly gigawatt of projects that are third party projects for you know, other uh, funds, investment funds, uh, infrastructure funds that we uh, asset manage and operate as well. Um, we have an O&M business um, that is separate from these divisions as well. And we do a first party O&M for all of our projects as well as third party O&M um, for a total of uh, nearly four gigawatts. Um, Wood McKenzie ranked us as the number four uh, O&M uh, in terms of size in the, I believe it was 2020 uh, report. Um, you know, with that, I just wanted to give a little bit of an introduction. Um, you know, we, we develop uh, quite a few projects of this scale. Uh, we have developed quite a few projects of this scale, and we typically retain a majority of those uh, all the way through asset management and uh, contracting, um, you know, through, through our, our various divisions at Cyprus. Um, and with that, I, I just wanted to see if you had any questions about Cyprus that I could answer, um, you know, other than the high level that I just gave. Thank you. Are there any questions from council members? Ms. Hofkemeyer. Thank you, Chair Drew. I did want to uh, bring to the council's attention that uh, the applicant has requested expedited process, and so um, we would like to keep that in mind as we go through our review. Um, staff are currently working on scheduling the initial public meetings associated with this project um, to be held within the first 60 days of receipt of application. Um, so more information will be coming to the council on that soon. 
So April 7th would mean roughly June 7th. We would and, and that would June be true 6th. for any pro June 6th. OK, that would be true Correct. for any project. We would need to have the public meeting and land use um, hearing hearing. Well, the public meeting and we usually combine that with land use hearing um, during that time frame. Um, I uh, have discussed it with for council members with Ms. Bumpus. We're still in a place in, um, following the uh, uh, guidelines of the state and the UTC where we are still doing um, remote public meetings and this would fall under that for the council's um, information. So we would look to, as we've done with our other recent projects, to have that back-to-back um, public informational meeting, getting the general comments as well as the specific land use hearing following that. I see a question, Mr. Livingston. Yeah, thanks, Chair Drew. Um, my, it's more of a comment that's um, related to the number of projects that we're aware of that are popping up in this valley. Um, so we just, you know, we just approved the transfer of the SCA for the Goose Prairie project. There's another one called Black Rock that's going through Yakima County's permitting process that to my understanding is right next to High Top. Then we have Austria. And then there's a couple others that I believe they're in the works too, just to the south and east of these um, projects in that area. And one thing that <clears throat> raises our concern is the Yakima Training Center is a large block of shrub step habitat that is, uh, you know, home to a lot of uh, uh, native wildlife species. And then we have the Hanford site to the south and east of the Yakima Training Center. This area is the is the connector between those two. Um, and um, so there is some some concern from our wildlife biologists about impacts to habitat connectivity with the number of projects that we're seeing pop up. And so I don't know if we've done this before, but I think it would be helpful to have some kind of a cumulative impacts analysis related to all these projects instead of reviewing them individually. I it would be helpful to understand and for everybody to be fully aware of the number of projects that are are on the docket in this area because eventually we will <laughs> um i don't know if the if the grid can handle it but we're gonna we're gonna lose this connectivity that we currently have in the area so i just it's just more of a comment that i wanted to make and um see if staff have any way of being able to look at these various projects that are um, coming our way thank you Thank you. We'll, we'll take that under consideration. I heard somebody. OK. Thank you for raising the question, Council Member Livingston. Uh, we will incorporate that into our review. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Okay. Um, with that, we have our next item on the agenda is the fourth quarter cost allocation. Ms. Bumpus. Thank you, Chair Drew and Council members. Again, for the record, this is Sonia Bumpus. Um, I am going to be going over the non-direct cost allocation for fourth quarter fiscal year 2022, just as we do at the beginning of each new quarter. Uh, one thing I did want to note before I go over the cost allocation percentages is that there is um, a, uh, a typo that we'll need to correct on this um, signed cost allocation form that's in your packets. Um, the correction is uh, pretty minor. It's just in the sentence before the cost allocation percentages that are listed. It refers um, to the third quarter fiscal year 2022, and we just need to change that to fourth quarter. 
So we will get that uh, corrected and um, update this form, and that's what will be officially posted to the website and provided to UTC Finance. Um, so I just wanted to make note of that. And now uh, I will go ahead and read off our cost allocation percentages. For Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project, 4%. Wild Horse Wind Power Project, 4%. Columbia Generating Station 24%, Columbia Solar 7%, WNP1 3%, Whistling Ridge 3%, Grays Harbor 1 and 2 10%, Chehalis Generation Project is 9%, Desert Claim Wind Power 3%, Goose Prairie Solar 8%, Horse Heaven Wind Farm is 15%, Badger Mountain 7% and Cypress Creek, which is the high top Ostria project, 3%. Thank and you. that concludes, yeah, that concludes the cost allocation update. Thank you. I've also asked Ms. Bumpus to give the council an update. As I mentioned at the last council meeting, we had a, a fair, substantial bill that passed and was signed by the governor. Um, that uh, goes into effect on June 30th. Uh, and the reason for that, it's a little different than most other bills, either 60 days after signing or, or after the signing period or the first of the biennium, but that was a request by our Office of Financial Management because we are in the bill creating a new account and need to move um, financial resources into that account before the end of the biennium, which is June 30th and the new, no, I'm sorry, fiscal year, and the new fiscal year starts on July 1st. So um, she has been working with a transition team um, with our staff, and I asked her to give an update to the council. Thank you uh, for that introduction, Chair Drew. So, yep, again, Sonia Bumpus, I'm going to just touch on a couple of things about the trans, what we're calling the transition. Before I do that, I want to also make note that uh, as Chair Drew uh, discussed and has talked a little bit about in past council meetings, there are a number of things that were uh, updated about FSEC in House Bill 1812. Uh, staff are internally working on something like a, a report that will summarize what these changes uh, are for FSEC. So this has to do with things that were changed in our statute, our uh, jurisdictional authority, procedural changes. Um, so there is going to be a document that will sort of summarize all of that that'll be made available. But today I'm just gonna talk about the transition piece, which has to do with just a few of the things that are cha changes to FSEC because of House Bill 1812. So for instance, four of FSEC's positions are funded, four of our highest paid positions are funded through general fund. Um, and then of course, uh, as Chair Drew mentioned, FSEC is uh, given its own account and we're also going to be stood up as our own independent agency, which is an excellent segue into what this transition is all about. So FSEC, as the council knows, uh, currently relies on the UTC for agency support services, uh, which are uh, you know, very significant and important for our operations. These include finance support, the records center at UTC supports us for records management activities, um, uh, human resources support. We also get support from their media folks. So there are a number of things that UTC currently uh, does with uh, FSEC, but uh, we're going to need to look at uh, standing these services up with the small agency services group at the Department of Enterprise Services. So the transition team that Chair Drew mentioned, uh, basically what they're doing is they're coordinating with all of the different players at the Department of Enterprise Services to uh, start working on contracts so that we can get those services uh, under contract as we prepare for this transition that'll take place June 30th. Um, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention about this. Um, we are also going to be uh, bringing on uh, 
for a project position, uh, Dave Walker. Uh, Dave starts tomorrow, but he'll be working temporarily with FSEC to assist with the transition. Uh, as you all know, we have uh, an unprecedented amount of projects right now. And so it's quite a bit to, to, to do, given that we're working to transition and stand up as an agency and also working to continue uh, the siting and review of all of our projects. So uh, we're looking forward to meeting Dave tomorrow and we'll definitely be introducing him uh, when we have our May Council meeting. So um, I think that those are the highlights. We will definitely provide more updates. Um, I suppose, let me just check my notes. There was one other thing I was going to mention, uh, just in case council members are curious. Uh, FSEC staff um, did do uh, basically a service gap analysis of small agency services with DES last month. So we looked to see what kinds of things they might not be able to provide to us that perhaps UTC does. We've only identified uh, a couple of things and we think that we'll be able to either uh, fill those gaps by additional hiring uh, internally within FSEC and or by uh, an interagency agreement potentially with the UTC. So we will uh, keep uh, council members updated, but I just wanted to let you all know sort of the goings on as far as the transition goes. And if you have any questions about that, um, I'm I'm available if you uh, are curious about how things are going on that front. Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, that's the end of our agenda for this monthly meeting, and uh, we will be providing you the draft order, land use consistency order for Horse Seven Hills for um, review before the May meeting, um, and also getting back to you uh, be probably before the May meeting on what potential dates we would have for the Austria and High Top um, uh, public informational meeting and land use consistency hearing. So with that, full agenda today. Thank you all for your participation and please uh, let uh, Ms. Bumpus know if you have questions or of course you can reach out to me. Thanks. The meeting is adjourned.